Ambassador. Today, 26 March 2022, is a historic day for the people of Aceh. Achenese diaspora in Scandinavia and together with the people of West Papua and South Moluccas have gathered here in the city of peace, The Hague, to commemorate the 149th anniversary of the Dutch declaration of war against the sovereign independent state of Aceh. That was 26 March 1873. On 26 March 1873, 149 years ago, the Kingdom of the Netherlands officially declared war against the sovereign state of Aceh and on the same day invaded our country. That war lasted almost a century, as Harper's Magazine had called 100-year war of today, one of the bloodiest and the longest colonial war in human history. On 27th December 1949, the Dutch colonial regime that has neither de jure nor de facto power over Aceh. In fact, the Dutch has had no presence whatsoever in any part of Aceh since their ouster in 1942, illegally transferred in non-existent sovereignty over Aceh to the newly fabricated Indonesia without election or any kind of consolations with the people of Aceh. This illegal transfer of sovereignty by one colonial power to another, namely Indonesia, is a flagrant violation of the principles of the decolonization procedures of the United Nations, which stipulates that sovereignty of a colonial territory is not transferable by the colonialist power to other colonialist powers, UN Resolution 1514XV. In this case, Holland must return Aceh to the Achenese, not to Indonesia. On the basis of the above-mentioned Dutch illegal annexation of Aceh to Indonesia, Aceh Sumatra National Liberation Front was then established in 1976, and the redeclaration of an independent Aceh was issued on 4th December in the same year. The re-establishment of Aceh as the successor state of the historic state of Aceh is in line with a number of UN resolutions, among others are the resolution 1514XV, 2621XXV, etc. Soon after the establishment of Free Aceh Movement, Indonesian forces conducted military operations against the relatively peaceful movement. For almost three decades, Aceh had become a killing field for the Indonesian armed forces. And between 1989 and 1998, Aceh was then declared as a military operational area, Dom, and ruled by the reign of terror. The atrocities perpetrated through these years had no equal in the history of Aceh, fighting against any colonial powers in the past. Arbitrary arrests, extrajudicial killings, routine torture, and disappearances of thousands of civilians had become commonplace. An estimation of over 30,000 innocent Achenese lost their lives in military custody, in hidden mass graves, or in secret concentration camps. These military operations continued unabated with the same intensity and brutality, and then martial law was imposed between May 2003 and May 2004, and another reign of terror was again in progress until Aceh was devastated by the Indian, Indian Ocean deadly tsunami on the Boxing Day of 2004. This natural disaster, coupled with a prolonged war, had brought the warning parties. The Republic of Indonesia and the Free Aceh Movement, GAM, signed a peace deal known as Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, in Helsinki, Finland. One of the, mo one of the many provisions in the MOU is the establishment of two human rights institutions, human rights courts and trust and reconciliation commissions. 22 years after 1999 massacres, not a single perpetrator of these flagrant violations of human rights against innocent Achenese has been brought to justice, signaling that such violations are allowed to be violated in Aceh with impunity. Almost 17 years after Helsinki Accord signed, nothing has changed with regard to protecting of human rights and resolving the past abuses. The Regional House of Representatives enacted a bylaw with regard to TRC on 31 December 2013, 
But Human Rights Watch stated that the violations in Aceh were too serious to be addressed only by the Truth Commission, which cannot impose criminal penalties. States have an obligation under international law to prosecute serious abuses of human rights and war crimes. Amnesty International, in one of extensive reports on Aceh, Time to Face the Past, April 2013, reminded us by saying, the conflict remains an open wound. The fate of many of those killed is still unknown. Per perpetrators of human rights abuses walk free. On 27 December 1949, the Dutch gave instead their entire colonial empire of the Dutch Indies to the new entity, the Jakarta-based Republic of Indonesia, not as required by decolonization rule and principle. Thus, Indonesia became the only successor state to the colonial empire of Dutch East Indies, with a territory as large as content continental Europe, from Moscow to Lisbon. There is no getting away from the fact that a successor state of a colonial empire is also a colonial empire by definition. It is also a cardinal principle of international law that, it, that the legitimacy of a state's control over a territory depends on how it is acquired, that territory. The right of Aceh to be restored as an in independent state again is further affirmed by the UNESCO. Documentary 23, 1990, paragraph 42, as follows. It is widely accepted that a group of people that is pre presently subject, subjected to military occupation that traditionally has formed a nation of its own or has been part of a different nation than the one which occupies it is entitled to assert or to restore its self-determination. ASNLF, therefore, urges your government to respect the freedom of expression, including the right to self-determination as enshrined in International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, and to fully adhere to the UN General Assembly a res uh, Resolution 47135 of 18 December 1992 concerning the rights of persons belonging to national or ethnic, religious, and linguistic minority. Thank you for your attention. Ache! 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 Maluku! 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 Papua! Papua! Papua!